I'll go back. They ask you to then take the balances and figure out for net position in B, figure out what is unrestricted and what is net investment in capital assets. Okay? So, we've done this too. You just may not think of it this way or remember it exactly like this. But in some of your presentations, you did this. Unrestricted is going to be cash, uh, your accounts receivable, anything that's not committed to something else, right? There's a chart. It's on the bottom of one of your... It's on the bottom of 421. Gives you an idea of what the computations are. There's also a longer table, more extended description, verbal description on 409. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not it. That's cash flows. 405. The bottom of 405, it gives you a verbal description of calculating net position components. Okay? And in both of your problems, both this one and 11-5, you will only have unrestricted net position and net investment capital assets. You will not have restricted net position. Okay. Okay, so what this is doing, in the end, what you should have down here is the balance of the net position. It asks you to do two years. So this is June 30th, 2007. So you're given all these numbers, you just got to plug them in. Okay? And at the end of the day, these should equal the fund balance or the net position that you have on the top of 437 at June 30th, 2007. Does that make sense? That's your double check. Sure. These? Yes. So asset liability, I, these are just names. These are just the names of accounts. And then whatever goes in your unrestricted net position will go here. Whatever goes in your net investment capital assets, which in this case are just the capital assets that you have, minus whatever bonds you have that are attributable to those assets. Okay? And again, the total of these should equal the, the net position that you have, that you're given on your trial balance. And then for 2008, uh, which I'll scroll down to here in a second, your net <coughs> position balance should equal the net position that you came up with up above. Right? You're just giving the breakdown of what your net position is. What part is unrestricted? What part is attributable to capital assets? Okay. So here's 2008. You have a few more capital assets, right? We added some. Both construction in progress and specific assets we put into service. And you added $5 million in bonds. Right? Plus the changes over here. So these numbers come from the calculations you did up above, right? This is your new cash balance, if you remember, right? We had a starting, then we did the transactions, then we had the end. That ending balance is what goes there. And at the end of the day, it should add up to, right, the, what your ending net position is. Sense? Yes? Good. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Up here? Seven. Okay. And that's what you're given. Yeah. That's what you're given. Right. And then you do 2008, which is, the which is what you computed, right? Right. And then the last piece is to do a statement of cash flows. This isn't as bad as you think. Statement of cash flows in the proprietary fund is a direct statement of cash flows. 
you remember the difference between direct and indirect? So a direct statement of cash flows means only whatever went into your cash account goes on your statement of cash flows. So this is taken directly from what you did up above. Okay? And it follows the format that you're given on 424. Yeah, 424 is the closest. Gives it to you elsewhere too. It gives it verbally on 409. There's another example on 408. Okay? Again, these are exactly what is up above <coughs> your cash account that happened, right? During the year. This is your beginning cash balance plus all your changes equals your ending cash balance. So you're starting to get to the point where you're tying this stuff together, right? You're doing a full cycle, okay? Questions? 